Hello space fans and welcome to another edition of Space Fan News. This week, astronomers using all of the deepest survey images taken from Hubble find the elusive dwarf galaxies in the early universe and find that there are now two trillion galaxies in the cosmos and three new dwarf planets are discovered in our solar system by a camera designed to study dark energy. <laughs> Remember back in the good old days, like last week, when we thought that there were around 100 billion galaxies in the universe? Remember that? Ah, simpler times. <laughs> so this week, astronomers are now telling us that there are way more galaxies in the universe than that, like 10 times more. According to a new study released this week that is the culmination of 15 years of work, counting, cataloging, sorting, and estimating the redshifts of all the galaxies seen in the deepest images taken by the Hubble Space Telescope and other telescopes around the world, but mostly Hubble because it has the deepest views of the cosmos ever taken, astronomers have estimated that there are now two trillion galaxies in the universe. So how do they know that? Well, this team of astronomers from the University of Nottingham in England poured over years of data to build a 3D map of all the galaxies in the universe from different times in the past, going back all the way back to about 600 million years after the Big Bang. Now, this was painstaking work, and once they had the map, they ran simulations of models against it to get an idea of the galaxies that must be out there, but they couldn't be seen yet because our telescopes aren't powerful enough. And it turns out that, well, we can really only see about 10% of the galaxies that we know were out there. What is it with the universe? Dark energy won't interact with us in any way. Dark matter won't interact with us in any way. We can only see 10% of the galaxies that we know are out there. It's getting a little bit ridiculous. <laughs> so what these guys did was they ran a model. It was called the Lambda CDM, which assumes a simple Big Bang that was created according to inflation theory, and then they let the physics run from there. Now this is something astronomers do all the time. Modeling is very important in cosmology. And this model has been very good at matching the observed universe throughout cosmic history, all the way from evidence that we can glean about the different instances after the Big Bang through cosmic evolution ever since, right up to the present day universe that we see around us. So it was from this model that they concluded that there were two trillion galaxies out there, 90% of which we can't see yet. They also found that there were many, many more galaxies in the early universe than there are today, and most of them are smaller. And then finally, they confirmed something we already knew, which was that the distribution of galaxies is not the same everywhere we look. So this is a cool result, and it's nice to be able to say there are two trillion galaxies in the universe, most of them small, dim, dwarf galaxies, but this really isn't anything all that new. So yes, there are more galaxies in the past than today, but we already knew that galaxies evolved by, among other things, merging with other smaller galaxies, so it makes sense that there are fewer of them today than there were in the past. Also, the idea that 90% of the galaxies in the universe are too faint and far away to be seen isn't new. Hubble has shown us that the early galaxies were small, ill-formed, and much more numerous than the galaxies we see today. Now, what is new, though, is that the model run by the astronomers in this study have a better understanding of the dwarf galaxies that we can't see yet and how they may have contributed to our current picture of galaxy evolution. So that's very nice indeed. But one more thing, and this seems to be confusing a lot of people trying to read this press release this week. The amount of stuff in the universe hasn't changed. Astronomers haven't changed any of the estimates. Just because we know there are all these tiny galaxies out there in the early universe doesn't mean that there are more stars in the universe, which Sky and Telescope estimates number 700 sextillion stars. That's a lot. So how is that possible, you may be asking. If we have so many more galaxies that we can't see, isn't our star count wrong? And the answer is no. Remember the Lambda CDM model that all of this is based on? Well, it predicts that the earliest clumps that formed in the smooth material after the Big Bang should have averaged about a million solar masses each. This is with dark matter and normal matter combined. Now, that's about the mass of a typical globular cluster today and a millionth of the total mass of the Milky Way. And that is the mass down to which the Nottingham team ran their extrapolations to come up with their count from. And finally, I would be remiss if I didn't say the obligatory phrase I always say at this time in a story, 
astronomers are anxiously awaiting the launch of the James Webb Space Telescope in October of 2018, which is designed specifically to help us image the very first stars and galaxies in the universe. So we will be able to follow up with observations with JWST. I will keep you posted. <laughs> Next, astronomers using survey data from the Dark Energy Camera, or DE Cam, mounted on the 4-meter Blanco Telescope in Chile, have discovered three more minor planets in our solar system. Now get ready for this, folks, because as more large-scale survey cameras are mounted on telescopes around the world, and these are cameras that are designed to look at wide areas of the sky for a long time, we're going to be making all kinds of new discoveries like this. Now the DE cam, or the DCAM, is part of the Dark Energy Survey, which is looking at 5,000 square degrees of the sky in the southern hemisphere over 525 nights in an attempt to characterize some of the properties of dark energy. It has a whopping 570 megapixels and is the largest astronomical camera in use currently. So they've been taking data since 2012 and creating a huge archive of, and catalogs of objects. Now what's great about these surveys is that they not only cover a huge area of sky, but they do it over time, which means that in addition to studying dark energy, we can also look for things that move. Now this is where this announcement comes in. Last week, astronomers reported the discovery of 2012 VP113, which they've nicknamed, and I don't know why, Joe Biden. I don't know, maybe, maybe he's a dwarf vice president? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, this potential dwarf planet was spotted on the outer fringes of the solar system in a region called the Inner Oort Cloud. Days later, just a little bit later, the same team reported two more potential dwarfs known as 2013 FY27 and 2013 FZ27. I guess they don't get a politician nickname. <laughs> now, both of these objects are in the Kuiper Belt, a grouping of relatively small bodies beyond the orbit of Neptune that is also home to Pluto and three other known dwarf planets. Astronomers suspect that the Kuiper Belt is full of dwarf planets, but Many either reflect too little light or they're too far away to have been visible in previous sky surveys. FZ27 sits 50 astronomical units away from the Sun. That's 50 times the distance of the Earth from the Sun, uh, and it's on the far edge of the Kuiper Belt. It's about 600 kilometers wide, and the object is probably massive enough, and this is important, to have become nearly round under its own gravity. And if you remember, that's important because that's one of the criteria for being classified as a dwarf planet. And the other recently discovered object, FY27, is probably about 1,000 kilometers across and was found roughly 80 AU from the Sun. So move over, Pluto. You've got neighbors. Well... Sort of. You kind of live in a big neighborhood. <laughs> you know, you get the idea. Now, like I said, get ready for lots more announcements of, of discoveries like this, because there are several surveys coming online in the future, notably the Large Synoptic Sky Survey, or LS LSST, which will image the entire night sky twice every single week. And it'll be using a 3100 megapixel camera, and I'll be doing this for over 10 years. Can you imagine the data? This kind of data set will reveal all kinds of transient night sky events, and with its almost 7 meter primary, it'll be able to see some of the dimmest objects in the solar system, which I think is just like downtown. <laughs> I finally got to work that in. Well, that is it for this week, Space fans. I want to thank all of you who wished me well during the passage of Hurricane Matthew, and I want to also thank you for your patience for me not posting anything last week, because things were kind of scary around here last Friday. And I also want to thank all of the SFN Patreon patrons for making SFN possible. Thank all of you for watching. And as always, keep looking.